I am so excited for this message that I believe God's given me and um, to share with you today. It's funny because Levi was telling me how the Spitfire plane sound, the sound of the Spitfire was so distinct. And I don't remember if he mentioned it in one of his messages, excuse me, um, but he was telling me that the most powerful and recognizable things about it was its distinct sound, that you didn't have to see it to know it was there. People heard it, didn't see it, but heard it and knew, but they were filled with the courage, filled with the, the knowledge that they're being protected and that there's a strength and I got to be a part of that. They didn't even have to see it and they knew that it was there. And so I want to talk about hearing today. I don't know about you, but I am hard of hearing. <laughs> and not in the sense that I need a hearing aid yet. But some people have told me that I am a good listener. And if only they knew that I actually have to work really hard to focus and to be intentional and to not just listen with my eyes, because I feel like I'm an active listener. Like on our Zoom calls, like I'm always like, oh yeah, but it doesn't always translate into me hearing what is being said. I'm totally giving away my secret um, thing. But I have to focus so hard to listen and to actually engage and to understand what people are saying. And sometimes I wonder if like there's something missed, like the wire missing, because it's like, I am trying so hard right now, but I am not like, I'm, I'm not comprehending, I'm not getting it. So then it's like my kids are telling me stories. They're telling me what happened in jujitsu or what happened in gymnastics or this Lego creation that they're building, what it means. And if I don't put my phone down and if I don't just turn over and give them my undivided attention and show them that I'm listening and try to get block out any other thing that might be on the back of my mind and look at them and listen to them telling their story, Clover will inevitably say, mom, did you hear a word that I said? And it's in that moment I'm like, oh my gosh, I must have a blank stare on my face. I must have just like logged out for a second. And it's so frustrating for the people, but, um, but also for me. And it's so funny because there, there are moments too where my oldest Olivia, like we'll be sitting together and we'll be talking with some people and she'll say something, but I won't hear it. And usually it's like, super funny or witty or a little joke and I won't hear it but then all of a sudden I say something but then I'm like wait where did that come from and then I look over and she's like mom I said that I'm like oh my gosh I'm so sorry but I, I it's hard for me to hear it's hard for me to engage and it's hard for me to truly listen it's a struggle for me and I have to fight for it and I don't know if this is something you struggle with if you do maybe just write it in the chat and say, hey, I got you, I'm there with you, just so I know that I'm not alone. But today, we're gonna open God's word, which we always do, because we tremble before God's word in this house. And we're gonna witness a moment in time when these people that we're gonna read about, whether they were hard of hearing or not, they couldn't help but hear and see this incredible sight. And I'm calling this message, Do You Hear What I Hear? Do you hear what I hear? And this passage, passage of scripture is probably familiar to a lot of us, and I love that. Um, and so if you open up your Bibles to Luke chapter two, verse eight. And this is actually the passage that our, our kids are reading this week in their Advent journey. And I just wanna shout out to our Fresh Life Kids team all across our church who are working so hard to create such a beautiful experience for our kids. And um, if you so feel inclined, you can write something in the chat like, FLK all day, or FLK all the way, or something like that, just to show some love. Um, but this week, we're actually reading this passage in our Advent journey. And if you haven't gotten that yet, um, you can actually um, 
go to freshlife.church slash kids at home and you can request one because we'd love to give one to you and it's not too late because it's super simple, easy to track and not a lot of stuff so you can, you can get it the day before Christmas and that'll be fine. Um, Luke 2. Verse eight, and in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And Father, we are just so grateful that we get to gather together today. I thank you for those who are here who it took everything to just open the computer and, and get on the internet and turn this on or opening up their phones in the midst of just a crazy morning. I thank you that you've brought us here right now for such a time as this. And Lord, as we open your word, we're expectant because we know that you speak to us through your word. So Lord, would you please open our eyes to see? Would you open our ears to hear what you're speaking to us today? And I pray that you would encourage our hearts, that you would inspire us, that you would do the deep work in us that only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus had just been born in Bethlehem. And the passage starts here with some shepherds. It says that they were out in the field and they were keeping watch over their flock by night. And as I've been studying this passage and actually I've been reading it for a very long time, I'm very slowly working my way through the book of Luke and I, it's been a while, but I love that. I love when we can just open up God's word and just let God speak to us through one simple thing and we can kind of let that thing help us and encourage us and strengthen us for the day. And um, it's always good to be in God's word. But what I love is um, how special this is. These shepherds got to experience something incredible that, as far as we know, no one else has experienced that kind of thing. They would get to experience this display of God's glory and the revelation of the good news of Jesus' birth. But what is so amazing about these shepherds? Why were they the ones that got this special announcement? Why wasn't it priests who were in the temple? I mean, they're probably closer to God in the temple, right? But that's actually not true. They got to hear this good news first because they were there. They were geographically It says they were in the field, so they were outside in the fields at night, and some commentaries say that it was like the last watch of the night. So it wasn't like the first watch, which would be earlier on in the evening, but it was the last watch right before dawn and right before the first light. And so here they are in the fields. Their job basically required them to be outside in the last watches of the night 
right before dawn, which, I mean, hello, fresh life worship, dawn is coming, beautiful. But also some of the most beautiful moments are right before dawn. I explained in my book, The Fight to Flourish, this one moment where Levi and I were, we were up early and we just, we saw the sky right before the sun even started to peek through. And it was, you could kind of see the dark, rich lights across the, the sky, but you, you couldn't really see, like, you could still see the stars, but you can see like a deep maroon and a deep purple. And it was just one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And granted, I don't see it very often because I don't wake up early as often as I would like. However, my husband is very much an early riser. Every morning, like 5 a.m., like clockwork, he's up. And he, some of the things he tells me about later on after I wake up, and he's like, oh my gosh, you missed, it was the, the moon was huge, but then the sun was rising at the same time, and then the stars, and, he, and so I actually don't usually see the beautiful things, but Levi does, and he shows me, which is so funny. It's funny because um, the early bird may get the worm, but they also get to see God's glory in a special way, and, and I just believe that that's amazing just in general, of getting up early, and Maybe some of us aren't early morning people, but there is something special about just the early morning and spending time with Jesus, and um, and it's just a special, special moment. Um, Another thing about these shepherds that Pastor Robert Ferguson talks about in his book, Are You Getting This?, which is incredible, and I highly recommend it, but he said that deserts train shepherds. He says, one of the reasons for attributing spirituality to shepherds is due to their geography. Farmers settled where the soil was good and the fruit was abundant, but the shepherds, on the other hand, led their flocks into the wilderness. That gave them an opportunity to face fewer distractions and establish a greater reliance on God. And so who knows if these shepherds were new of the coming Messiah, um, they probably, as they were raising these sheep, taking care of these flocks, that they were actually the very sheep that were sacrificed in the temple. Maybe these men were godly men who were waiting for the coming of the Messiah and who were looking forward to their Savior coming. And and here they are at night in the field, and it was an easy place for the angel to show up and then for the host of angels to show up and sing. Verse 9 says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Good news. Good news. This is good news. This is the best good news that there's ever been in the whole world, that Jesus has come and came from heaven to earth. Um, I don't know if any of you watched John Krasinski's Some Good News, but it was one of our favorite things throughout the earlier part of the year, and then when he stopped doing it, we were super sad, and Maybe write in the chat if you want John Krasinski to bring back some good news, some good news. Um, We need it. But even better than some good news, this is the good news that will change your life and that has changed mine. Jesus Christ, God in flesh, coming from heaven to earth. Jesus is the sound of heaven. He's saying, do you hear what I hear. Warren Wearsby talks about how Jesus' birth drew angels from heaven to earth. The angels must have been amazed when they saw the creator born as a created being. And that was so interesting to me because I never have thought from the angel's perspective what Jesus' birth must have been like. But it literally drew them out of heaven to earth. And they're getting to exclaim and sing and show God's glory to these shepherds. But just that perspective of, man, they must have just been amazed. They're God. They're God in heaven coming down as a baby, as a weak, vulnerable baby, as a human. This is good news for us today. This is good news for you today. Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our joy. 
And like we've learned in this series, we can be in the middle of the storm and we can have joy. We can be in the middle of heartache and we can have peace. We can be in the very midst of the pain and the struggle, but God is here with you. God is here with me right here and right now. And I just wanna remind you of that. And I love also this idea that this good news of great joy is for all the people. Not some of the people, not the really holy religious people, not the really rich people, for every person, for all the people. In the book of Luke, he actually wrote this gospel so that his readers would understand that the gospel is for all, both Jew and Gentile, every single person. I read Warren Wearsby wrote, he said, by visiting the shepherds first, the angel revealed the grace of God toward mankind. Shepherds were really outcasts in Israel. Their work not only made them ceremonially unclean, but it kept them away from the temple for weeks at a time so they could not be made clean. God does not call the rich and mighty. He calls the poor and lowly. This good news is for all of us, no matter where we are, in the spectrum, no matter who we are, God's good news is for us all. For all the people, this is the sound of heaven. The good news is for all the people. This good news is for you. This good news is for me. Write that in the chat. This good news is for me. This good news is for me. And I know that we're all in different seasons and stations of life right now, and we're literally going through the same thing across the whole world, but it's affecting us so differently, and we're experiencing, some of us are experiencing the joys of being home all the time. Some of us are experiencing the great frustrations and annoyances, and we're, we're experiencing different things within a scope of the same thing but this good news is for us. Jesus Christ, God becoming flesh. In verse 11, <clears throat> the angel says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Just a reminder that God is in the highest. His perspective, he sees everything from beginning to end. He sees it all, and he, he knows. He knows what's going on with you in this moment right here, but he sees you, and he knows you, and he loves you. He has the big picture in mind. And yet, so here's God in the highest, and yet coming down as a baby to bridge the gap from God to people. Jesus is our bridge. Peace is the sound of heaven. Verse 15, it says, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another. Now this is really cool to me. First of all, that it said suddenly. So first in first 13, it says, suddenly there was a, gr a group of angels singing and praising a multitude of heaven, heavenly hosts praising God. But then in verse 15, it says, but when the angels went away from them into heaven. So one comment, commentator said that um, they kind of just mosey on, moseyed on back to heaven, which is just funny to even think about. Like, they suddenly showed up, like, surprise, here we are, glory to God in the highest. But then they just kind of like slowly went back, like high-fiving, like, hey guys, see you later when you come to heaven, it's so awesome. Um, but it was just so funny to think, like, they just kind of slowly went to heaven. But then the shepherds said to one another, and this is a beautiful example right here and right now for us to glean from, is that here the shepherds are, they're probably in like a, a group or like a half circle, and they're looking up and they're seeing this brilliant show of heavenly awesomeness. And then the angels mosey on away, and then they're like looking at each other like, wait, did you see that? 
Okay, good, because I saw that. But then they circle up, and they're talking to each other. They're like, okay, that was crazy and amazing and not normal, so what do we do about it? And here they are. It says that they said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem. So in verse 8, it says they were in the same region. So we, I don't know how far exactly away they were, but they were in the same region, but they said, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And then they went with haste. They went quickly. They went fast. But here's the thing, going to find this sign. So the angel said, this is a sign for you. You're going to find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. But he didn't say like, and he's in this like cave-like thing where there's lots of animals around him. He's, he's Basically, you're going to go to the inn, but no one's available. No one, can, no one can go in there, so then you're going to turn right. Like, they didn't give any directions. They just said, there's a baby with some swaddling claws surrounding him, and then he's lying in a manger. So this actually, them going to Bethlehem, first of all, traveling, walking, they had to look. Like, they had to find. So I don't know how long it took them. But then it says, they found Mary and Joseph. Like the, the word in, in that language was like a treasure. Like they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. So they had seen this sight. They circled up. And honestly, that's like a fresh life group. It's like you're circling up online. You can circle up. You can zoom up with the glitching and the muting ha- problem you can circle up and you can talk about what God reveals to you. You can talk about what God's doing in your life. And we need each other. We need that circling up. But then it doesn't stop there because there's action involved. We're, we're going to go to Bethlehem. We're going to find this baby. We're going to see what God just told us we could see. And then when they saw it, they made known the saying, which means they Talk to the people who were there. And I don't know how many people were there, but it seems like maybe there were a lot. So I don't really understand, but it says they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child, and all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. So I don't know if there was like, they were because they were looking like, hey, can you guys help us find this baby? Maybe there was a group of people that came around, but I have a friend who, when she was in labor with one of her babies, Um, like she was just hanging in the hospital room, had like a bunch of family and friends in the room. And all of a sudden, like it kind of like the transition happened, you know, like when, okay, now we need to focus. But the the nurse was like, we should probably like have these people go out of the room. And my friend was like, oh yeah, probably. And I'm like, who does that? Who's like in intense labor and like about to give birth to a baby and, and she just wants her friends in the room? I don't know, not me. It's not, it's not like, pretty (laughs) for those of you who haven't had babies but all who wondered so the shepherds told their story they told what's going on and they wondered at what the saying was the shepherds told what was happening but Mary treasured up these things pondering them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard Now, this is a beautiful story, and there's so much more that we could extract from it and things we could learn from it, but because I don't even have that much more time, we are going to go for it now, okay? So I just have a few questions. As we're seeking to apply this to our lives, I just have a few questions that you can write down and ask yourself, ask your Fresh Life group. The first question is this. How do I hear God's voice? You might be saying, Jenny, this scripture is amazing and super awesome and inspiring, but I've never experienced anything like that. I haven't experienced the angels telling me at work how awesome God is. But the shepherds didn't know that that angel was going to come and tell them this. They were just doing what they were doing. They were working, but they were just an easy spot for the angels to show up to. How are you taking advantage of where God has you right now? Because you may not be in the place that you wanna be. 
You may be experiencing things that you don't want to experience, the heartache, the struggle of life. But how are you taking advantage of right where you are, knowing that God can speak to you right there? And he wants to speak to you right there. How are you being aware and open to him speaking to you? Also, the people that they told didn't get to have the same experience as them. So here the shepherds are experiencing this beautiful thing, but the people that they told didn't get to have that experience. So I don't think it's about if you hear God audibly. I don't think it's about if you see the angels in the skies. I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about hearing from God right where you are. Because honestly, I've never heard God's voice audibly. It's usually just a, like a, something in you that's like, hmm, God might be, I think God's telling me to do this. I think it's this. It's so much more simple than we make it. Some of us are waiting for, you shall do this. But it's not that as much as, oh, I'm reading God's word and it's telling me to be kind to my husband. Oh, I should probably do that. It's more simple. God speaks to us more simply. How do I hear God's voice? Well, we read the Bible every day. We carve out time to spend with God, whether that is in the morning, whether that is at night. We need to hear from God. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and hidden things that you do not know. And I think for a lot of us, I know for me, it's it's easy to call out to God. God, I need you. God, do this. God, do that but then we don't stick around for him to answer because he says, call to me and I will answer you and I will show you great and hidden things that you do not know. So we call to him, but then we've got to be still before him. We got to open up his word and say, God, speak to me and wait. Waiting on the Lord brings us such great strength in our life. Number two, what does my life sound like? I believe if we truly hear the sound of heaven, we will live lives that sound like heaven. What does my life sound like? Am I letting God's love and word pour into me? And is that what is coming out of me? We like to say in this house that worship is the sound of a healthy soul. What's coming out of your life? Psalm 89 verse 15 says, blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. What does your life look like? Are you like the shepherds? Are you telling people about Jesus, about your Savior? Isaiah 52 7 says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. What are your feet looking like these days? <laughs> not, mine are not looking good. I haven't had, I haven't, okay, two, TMI, never mind. Um, <laughs> how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Are you a good news bringer? Am I a good news bringer? That's who we are. We bring the good news of Jesus to the people in our lives. Number three, what does the church sound like? What does the church sound like? I love how my husband painted this beautiful picture of the church, of the bride of Christ being a warrior bride. I love that because in my mind, I always think of like the bride, like with the veil and yes, brides are beautiful. I'm not saying they're not, but just, it just made me feel like what, that's awesome. We're just standing there. And, but this warrior bride, this like, maybe she's got a slit all the way up here and she has like a knife on the thing and she has a bow and arrow and she's like, has a white like bandana around her head. I'm like, yeah, that's the kind of, that's the kind of bride I want to be. I want to be hardcore. I want to be a fighter. I want to be, I want to be the church like that. And that's who we are. And I know some, some of us might, you might tell me that you've been hurt by the church. And, and I realize that that's a real thing and that um, that's hard to walk through. And I'm, I'm sorry that you've experienced that. But I also know that the church is made up of people who are imperfect and don't get it right all the time. 
and there's room for grace, and there's room for forgiveness, and there's room for love that covers a multitude of sins. And um, I just believe that as imperfect as we are, us together is better than us separately. And I know that in this season, we are separated, and we're not together like we want to be. Or doing a Fresh Life online group is not easy, and it's hard because you can't give someone a hug. But it's us now. This is us in this season of being together separate, of being all together separate. But the goal is this, that we follow Jesus imperfectly, and we're going to forgive imperfectly, and we're going to deal with life imperfectly, and we're going to show grace imperfectly. But the point is that we have the common goal of loving God and loving each other, of loving God and loving each other. So what should the church sound like? I think the church should sound like love. John 13, 35 says, by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another, if you have love for one another. 1 Corinthians 13. Verse one, it says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Now that is horrible. And I'm sorry, but also not sorry, because this this will hopefully stick in your head that when you say, oh, I I, I speak the the tongues of angels and oh, I, I... I speak different tongues of men, but, but you don't have love. You don't have God's love pouring into you and flowing out of you. It's like this. And that's horrible. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, if I do all of these great things, And if I deliver up my body to be burned and I sacrifice myself, but have not love, I gain nothing. Nothing, if you didn't hear that. But here's the church. And this is what is so beautiful about the church is that here we are. Love is patient. The drums can start. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. This is us. This is the church. This is who we are. What I love so much is that we have drums over here. We have a bass over here. We have piano. We have guitar. We have beautiful voices. We're all spread out. And this is us, church. We are all spread out across the world, across the nation. And it's hard. It's not easy. But this is us. And this should be us. We should be creating a beautiful sound. We should be creating a sound so that others will look in and they'll say, I want that. I want that Jesus. I want that Savior. I want my life to be changed like that. What it looks like is Manny in Portland leading a Fresh Life group of people all across the country. What it looks like is Bruce Smith from Great Falls, Montana, leading a men's group of men all across the country. What this looks like is Kevin and Elena Guido leading a Fresh Life group from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, of people all across the country. It's the same with Judy Murphy. It's the same with Christina Doty. It's the same with Kim Best, Ashley, Rochelle, these amazing leaders across our church and more who have seen that, hey, this is, this is, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna gather people 
across the church. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Zoom. I'm gonna call these people. I'm gonna text these people. We are the church and that is beautiful and that's amazing and this is us. This is Jesus. This is the sound that is meant to pour from our lives. This is the church. This is us. The sound that we're meant to live, that's meant to come out of our lives. We might be spread out, but we're the church and our sound can still be beautiful, maybe even more beautiful. Like we learned last week, we could be scattered, but the sound that's coming from our hearts and our lives and our lips and our Instagram posts can bring life and love and joy and this good news for all the people. Do you hear what I hear? Question number four. What do I hear God saying to me? When was the first time, I want you to think about it. When was the first time you heard God's voice? And I'm, again, I'm not saying audibly. I'm saying when was the first time your ears were opened and you first heard that God loved you and that he created you and that he had a plan for you? Think about that first time. Now, sound is emotional, and I know even now, as I say this, you're thinking of the song that changed your life 20 years ago or um, the song that brought you through a difficult season of your life. I know for us, it's Cornerstone. And even when the first bars of that song get me because it takes me back to a time where we were experiencing such grief and yet God was there in the midst and, and Jesus was our cornerstone. We connect with music, we're moved by it. I don't know if you've ever watched videos of people hearing for the first time. Um, I spent actually a good amount of time weeping and watching. Um, so if you do watch people listening, hearing for the first time, just make sure you have some tissues with you. But um, I just, our, our team made this little snapshot of a video of, of kids hearing for the very first time. Hello. Hi, Jonathan. Stop for a second. Hi. Good. Did you hear that? <laughs> hey, I sound. You're hearing yourself better. She's hearing herself better. Hi, baby. Sounds good. Daddy. Daddy loves you. Daddy loves you. <laughs> if you've forgotten, God's telling you right now that he loves you. And I think sometimes we can let the things we're struggling with, the things we're dealing with, the, the life that we're barely making it through, keep us from hearing the fact that God loves us so much. And if you've never heard, hear now what I've heard, what people around me in this room have heard that your Father in heaven loves you. He created you. He created you with a purpose in mind. And he loves you so much. And he loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus, our Savior, into this world as a baby so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. When we hear God's voice, it changes our life. When we even allow him, when we say, God, speak to me, it changes the direction of our life. And in this moment, I just want to read a passage of scripture over you. And I know it's kind of been long, but if you could just hold on for a second, I really feel like God wants to speak this over you today. As you're in your living room, 
as maybe you're with your family, some friends, maybe you're all by yourself. And I just wanna speak this over you. This, this word, God's word washing over us is so powerful. If you're, if you're washing dishes, maybe just stop for a second. If you're folding clothes, if you're um, kind of busy, I, I've been there before. I will watch church and I will be doing stuff at the same time and that's okay. I'm no judgment, but if you are, just hold on for a second. And if you feel comfortable in the space that you're in, would you just close your eyes and let me speak this over you. Isaiah 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples a leader and a commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. God speaking this, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. God is speaking this over you today. And my prayer is that you wouldn't be hard of hearing, but that you would hear, that God would open up your ears to hear that he loves you. And my last final kind of secret question is what is God hearing you say? What is he hearing you say? My prayer is that he would hear you say, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. My prayer is that he would hear you say, yes, Lord. And Father, we are so grateful for your word. Thank you for speaking to us today. And in this moment, I just wanna pray for anyone who knows God and loves him, but has just been having a hard time hearing him. I wanna pray for you. Lord, would you meet this person right where they're at right now? Lord, I pray that even in this message, they've just, it's been so clear to them that you love them and that you delight in them and that you are God and that you are good. And I just pray for a refreshed heart, a renewed spirit, a remembrance of when they first heard your voice, when they first gave their hearts to you, that you've given them purpose 
And even in the midst of what they're struggling through and in right now, there's purpose right there. Pray that you'd open their eyes to see, open their ears to hear, and that you would just surround them with your peace. I pray for those who are walking into this Christmas season with a weight on their shoulders. Maybe it's grief. Maybe it's pain. Maybe it's the loss of what was or what could have been. Maybe it's disappointment. I pray, God, that they would look up in this Christmas season, that they would see Jesus their Lord, their Savior, that they would see your kindness, your kind eyes looking at them, smiling on them, that you would give them the strength to walk toward Christmas as hard as it might be. And I pray that you'd refresh their spirits, God. And to anyone who doesn't have a relationship with Jesus, who doesn't know the Savior, who doesn't have a a relationship with him, who doesn't walk with Jesus, who doesn't have this yet, I wanna pray for you. And this honestly is just um, a moment in time where if you're you're feeling God speak to you and you're you're kind of feeling like you saw in that video, like, oh my gosh, I've been missing out on something. I hear God's voice. Now is the time to respond. Now is the time to give your heart to him. And so this is a moment in time for you. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, this is a moment for you. And I'm just gonna pray a prayer and you can say it out loud with me, praying this, accepting Jesus into your heart as your Lord, as your savior, giving you purpose and strength and life in your life. You can pray, dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and that I'm far from you, but that you sent Jesus to bring me near. I accept you into my life as my Lord and my God. I surrender to you. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Take my life. It is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. 